Good morning. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. May the peace and mercy of Allah be upon all of you. God's peace and blessings. We are very happy today. We're excited uh, at another wonderful day of Ramadan and a special day uh, in that we have our beloved Sheikh Dr. Muhammad bin Yahya and Ninawi, a uh, scholar, leader, teacher, um, founder and director of Medina Institute, the Islamic seminary here that has campuses uh, around the world and um, author of the Book of Love. And we are looking forward, dear Sheikh, to your wonderful insights today. Alhamdulillah, turn it over to you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ala. Thank you so much, my brother Tariq and uh, the entire ISB crew in Atlanta. It's been an honor. Uh, being with you uh, and uh, learning from all of you and uh, alhamdulillah we are in Ramadan alhamdulillah and uh, there's a lot of things that we can do in Ramadan among them is discovering ourselves and we've been talking about that uh, the whole month basically it the pandemic and the stress that people are under and also having to counter that spiritually with fasting and with prayers and all that that gives us an opportunity not just to neutralize the toxic environment uh, uh, psychologically speaking and and about the news with good stuff but also it gives us an opportunity to reflect and um, spiritually speaking we understand uh, from islamic traditions that uh, the shayateen are locked up in ramadan uh, and that gives us one very important conclusion that every evil thought, word, or action that are, that are generated in this Ramadan from us, community of faith here, means it's a manifestation of your lower nafs or your lower self. Because now the shayateen of the jinn are locked up. So whether the thought is evil, the word is evil, or the action is evil, mm -hmm. that is then a manifestation of the lower self. And that gives us, I mean, that's the first important part of treatment is diagnostics. So that gives us a nice diagnostic tool, in a sense, to realize, hey, I think I'm thinking this, I'm saying this, or I'm doing this. And now... I can't blame it on shaitan anymore. I can't blame, on the devil, they blame it on the devil anymore. This is now my lower nafs leading me. And let me isolate these things, write them down, and try to tackle them one point at a time to improve ourselves. Because the whole point of Ramadan is giving us also, among many other things, an opportunity to actually improve ourselves, find out where we can uh, do some more improvement, perfect ourselves better, etc. So that's very important. That's why a prayer that does not prohibit you from thinking evil or saying or doing evil is not a prayer. Right? Because that's in the Munkar. Allah says in the Quran that prayers ought to refine you so that you are above saying evil or thinking or doing evil and therefore if you're praying and you're still doing thinking or saying evil then there's a problem in that prayer and no better time to discover that than ramadan fasting that does not lead you to taqwa to conscientiousness of god because that's what Allah mentions about fasting in the Quran. That means, so you arrive at taqwa. That's what fasting means. So therefore, if fasting does not lead you to transparency with God, then there's a problem with fasting. It's not fasting. And recitation of the Quran, if it does not uh, generate application, then it's short, right? And uh, therefore, it's important to realize that there are at least four things that will 
directly impact the state of your fasting. What your eye sees, what your ear hears, what your tongue utters, and what goes into your stomach. But you all, meaning from good, good sources or bad sources. But you know that what comes out of your mouth is much more uh, detrimental than that which goes into it. Um, so pay attention to these four things because they actually directly impact your fasting. Fasting is never just abstaining from food and drinks from Fajr to sunset, right? And uh, therefore, uh, a, an advice from the from the wise, let's say, and that's not me. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to learn from the wise, but advice from the wise, right? From the old wise folks, our spiritual ancestors. Uh, lighten your breaking the fast in, in Ramadan. I know we're all hungry by the time sunset comes in, but you know, increase your fluid, lighten the quantity, improve on the quality, lighten the quantity, and you will see your taraweeh or your night prayer becoming better. Also, uh, be conscious of excessive, uh, non-relevant uh, indulgence in talks and all that. You will see that you start watching what you say and you improve also the quality of what you say versus the quantity. Um, very important that we realize also uh, that uh, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hadith in Imam Tirmidhi narrated it where he says وَرَغِمَ أَنْفُ رَجُلًا دَخَلَ عَلَيْهِ رَمَضَانُ ثُمَّ انْسَلَخْ قَبْلَ أَنْ يُغْفَرَ لَهُ He says which means you would be a loser if Ramadan comes to you and you Allah gives you the opportunity to be present in Ramadan and Ramadan departs and you have not now been entirely refined or refined spiritually since forgiven uh, uh, a new opportunity, new page is open. You, that's a loser is one that doesn't take up opportunity and advantage of this month. Um, there are four thieves that, that are known in Ramadan. Number one, bedtime. Number two, food time. Number three, screen time. And number four, internet time. Mm. So I differentiate it between internet and screen because it could be TV, it could be whatever it is. Those are thieves in Ramadan. Why do I say thieves? Because they steal your precious time. When Allah tells us in the Quran, Ramadan is a yaman ma'dudat, limited number of days. And then someone comes and robs you of your time. Well, you know what? As Allah says in the Quran, وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ by the time that human being will always uh, be at loss, which means you can recuperate your health back, your wealth back, your knowledge back. You can get lots of things that you lose back. But there's one thing you'll never get. You can even get your faith back if you lose faith. Uh, Allah Ta'ala keep us safe. But you will never get time back. Time, you cannot get it back. Once it goes, it's gone. And therefore, be careful of those who rob you of the most precious thing after faith that you have, which is time. And these are these four things, right? And, you know, spending time. It's limited days. Take advantage of it and uh, improve yourself in this. And this is a charge for the whole year, obviously. It's a charge for, uh, to, to refine us, to make us uh, better vis-a-vis -vis the creator, better vis-a-vis -vis the creation to make us more transparent with the Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and make us also more transparent with the creation. And you will see the result when Eid comes, when Ramadan is, uh, finishes and Eid comes. This will be a true celebration, a spiritual celebration, not just a food fest or uh, visiting family and friends and loved ones, etc. It will be, you'll be gaining, you'll be given that, metaphorically speaking, that certificate of achievement. You've done it. You've been able to control things and you've been able to refine things and you've been able to take advantage of things. Let me just finish with this. Think of Ramadan as, as, a, 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 as a rain that pours down right here, like right here in our great state of Georgia, right? So when, when the rain comes, the rain just comes and it's really heavy rain, right? So think of that heavy rain 
and heavy rain is just continuous for a month and it's covering everything and everyone and it's really rain and this metaphor is all good all good everything that's good that you want is in that rain and you're not trying to get wet at all you're trying not trying you're trying to avoid to get a drop of that rain so that's how ramadan is it's covering everything and everyone and it's sort of uh, encouraging us to be exposed to these massive spiritual atmospheres even a little exposure will change you will change you in a in a big way will change everything in you open your heart to this beautiful month there are lots of love that are being sent your way lots of mercies being sent your way lots of hope are being sent your way that's what it is from the all loving creator of all so i know we're still in the pander the pandemic and there are lots of things going on and all that and there's no better time to invest in a spiritual upliftment and in a spiritual uh, refinement than times where people think all the solutions are just uh, uh, constrained or restricted to matter, but we go also to the Lord of, of matter and we ask him to invoke on us all his blessings and all his love and all his care and all his kindness and to alleviate the suffering of all those who are suffering. Ya Allah, in this country and today, there are many people who are suffering because of this pandemic. Ya Rabbil Alameen, we ask you and we implore you to, to grant them all healing, all people, not just in this country, in every other country, and all human beings. Grant them all healing from you. Grant them all, and envelop them with your love and with your kindness. Return them to their families. Bring joy, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and happiness to all people. Guide us all and bless us all. And thank you so much for listening and a very blessed Ramadan to all of you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wow, Shaykh, alhamdulillah. Ameen to the dua. It's a wonderful dua. Ameen. Ameen, 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 ameen. Wow, it was wonderful. Um, there were so many pearls in what you said, but one of the things that struck me is if our fasting, if my fasting is not leading me to transparency with God or with Allah, then there's a problem with my fasting. And what a better time than to self-diagnose. So I also make a dua that, that he helped me and all of us, as you said, to stay away from those four thieves, the bedtime, the food time, the screen time, and the internet time, to be more intimate with Allah. Thank you, dear Sheikh. Alhamdulillah. May Allah reward you. Jazakallah khair. Uh, everyone, please, um, we wish you a wonderful day and the rest of your, your Ramadan. We would ask you to please um, uh, visit us on our YouTube channel. Uh, and. Um, May God's peace, blessings, mercy, and love be upon all of you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you, sir.